Porsche Minor Mechanics and uh, Campervan T669. You join me today on a video that I never thought I would be making. The one thing or the two things that I won't do are clutches and cam belts. This one's slightly different in that it's on Rory, the camper van, Fiat Ducato, uh, 130 multi-jet, 2015. Uh, it's a 250 model, if that helps you out. Uh, it's only got 35,000 on the clock, but it is sort of like a 2015. It's 22, three now. Is it 23, isn't it? <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I'm doing a cam belt. So it's overdue on a time period. Transverse engine, they are awkward, and I've never done a Fiat Ducato. Cam belts aren't a major job. It's the access to them that can be daunting and very much off-putting. And I got to the stage a couple of days ago with it where I wasn't beyond the point of no return, but I thought, shall I do it, shall I not? I went away, I pondered over it a little bit. So I've decided so far to have a go at it. I'm gonna show you where I've got the vehicle to at the moment, it's only set up stages really. So I'll take you over to the motor and show you what I've done so far. I've removed the front wheel, jacked it up, got it up as high as I can on a series of blocks. I have a hydraulic jack on the jacking point. I've got it high enough to get a stack of blocks underneath it on the chassis. So I've got two points of lifting. They're both sharing the load, but if one were to fail, I'm quite confident that the motor's not gonna drop on the floor. Wheel removed, inner arch removed, which is just a series of screws here, here, uh, along the bottom there. One, and that's it there at the top. That gives you access to your inner arch and that gives you your panel, which uh, opens up here, which is your timing cover is in there. The dripping that was going on is I've got the radiator on a, on a slow drain. From underneath, you get to see a little bit more about what the job entails. Just up there is actually there. Turn that lug and I'm catching majority of the fluid in a bucket although i will replace it things i'm going to need to remove before i can start the job i'm going to take the intercooler pipe off which runs in front of the timing cover so i'll need the room then but in there from the top we're going to need to remove the expansion bottle move the power steering fluid out of the way under this cover here that sits along the top you have removed the three lugs here to lift that up that gives you access to your power steering and your water bottle just to crack the tap just to crack the cap off just to allow it to drain so we're going to be removing these or removing this one and its mounting bracket the power steering body will stay in the vehicle i'll just tie it up out the way somewhere we've got an engine mount in here uh, this has got to come off the chassis this will unbolt from the main block on the engine. So they're the main things that I need to get out of the way before I can even assess what's involved. But you can see, looking down there, just how tight it really is. Underneath here, I've already set up jack out of the vehicle on some blocks with a lump of hardwood on top of it. I've drilled out this, a hole in the center so it can sit within the locator on the jack. This is what you're gonna need to do to lift, take the weight of the engine when you remove that mount. And also you're gonna wanna lower it down a little bit to gain access to the crank pulley bolts to remove it. So we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but I'm set up to do that now. Also be removing, if fitted on your vehicle, the aircon compressor. So this has basically got four bolts, one, two, three, and four. 
there is an electrical connection above it. You're gonna to need to disconnect that. And basically we're just gonna tie this out of the way. I can't see any kind of tension adjustment for this belt. It's just a single twin pulley belt. And in there are the four bolts that you're gonna to need to remove to get that crank pulley off. And that's fundamentally about it. So I'm gonna get a cup of tea and then we'll crack on. Right, I may have not mentioned earlier that I have already removed the headlight, which is quite easy. It's just two fixings on this particular model. I have removed these two pipes, one and two. They sit there and there. They just, they're just on like spring clips. Pull those, we'll tie them up out of the way later on. I'm gonna remove the bottle and I might even have to remove the washer bottle as well. Not quite sure yet, like I say, never done a Ducato before, and I wanna try and create as much space as I can. So let's see if we can get that bottle off there. There's a 10 mil tucked up right on the end of the power steering bottle. 10 mil. So, this one here is just holding the bottles together. So I'm not gonna worry about that one right now. Can't see. There's a little clip on this bottom pipe here, which you just springs out a little way. Whoops, and springs back again. All right, okay. Uh-huh, and just pops out like that. There's your little, you can see that, there's your little clip there, just pull that out and it pops off the bottle. I'm gonna remove this one here. Because I actually think it's gonna get in the way of me trying to get, wiggle this bottle out. So there's a, this is a, like an Allen key size. I don't know what size that is. So it must be a four mil, I guess. Then do this one. Like I say, it's literally just holding the bottles together. It's one of these screws at the back as well, joining the two bottles together. So let's see. If taking that out of there, you can't see it very well, probably on the camera. Get that in there. I'm gonna scrap that idea. I think the bottle's gotta come out. 10 mil there. Might be a good idea to get some trays. Keep all your bolts, nuts and bolts together. I'm going to probably do that because I think there's going to be a lot of them. Right, I'm going to keep that one. I'm going to screw it in the back for now. I'm going to pop out that electrical connector there. Just got the lugs on. Okay, what I'm gonna to do to start with, I'm not gonna do my original plan of trying to remove the bottle. I have unbolted this bracket here, which sits on the chassis uh, there. I put the bolt back in the hole and that mounts to 
the screen wash bottle. I've undone the clip here, which sits, that's for the motor for your screen wash, disconnected this pipe from the collar of the screen wash bottle. And I'm now gonna try and lift it out uh, and try and get it clear. Yeah, it's got to come out because the bracket that all this sits on is underneath it. There's two bolts for it. Right, so I've got this here. Let me go and get a couple of cable ties. I'm just looking at this. You've got four, two bolts on the back to this metal frame here. There's two there. And one there, three and four at the front. I don't know if to try and get the bottle out of the frame or try and remove the whole lot as one piece. Okay, let's try and undo the bracket and see if I can get the whole lot out. Okay, I removed the washer bottle. Basically, I have disconnected the hose from the motor and I'm just gonna leave it there. Got it all out of the way, easy, much better. Right, so we've got one, two, three going down to the front of the vehicle and number four, is can you see that number four is there right so we'll undo those they're 13 mil that's the entire bracket assembly for the expansion bottle and the power steering bottle let's see how we get on with that okay i've removed the four bolts uh one two three you can just see the stud sticking out and number four right at the front now this one you undo it from underneath okay so that's your four bolts holding this framework together then you can you're able to get the back bolt out that holds the power steering pump to sorry the power steering reservoir to the expansion bowl and then you should be able to wiggle the whole bottle out let's have a crack at that Voila. So, already the space is beginning to open up a little bit. I'm gonna tidy, tie some of these little clips out of the way. When you're removing that bolt from underneath here and you're pulling that bracket out, be careful, you've got loom underneath here. Uh, keep your bolts together for goodness sake because there's so many of them. The power steering pump bottle you don't need to disconnect that and you don't want to because you'll have hydraulic fluid everywhere. So now we can see a little bit more about what is required uh, of the job. We have got a bolt there on the engine mount, two there on the engine mount and three there which have all got to come out. I might as well have a go at those now. Bearing in mind I've got the sump supported from underneath the vehicle. Engine mount removal, uh, 18 mil socket, one, two, over the back here, three, and one, two, three on the actual engine mount itself. They are all loose. I've taken the nuts off of there. Should now be able to lift out the entire engine mount assembly. You know, I don't think those this engine mount's been off. It's hard to tell because there's like manufacturers sort of like Fredlock still there. I can't work it out. I'm still undecided whether this has been off before or not, but when we get to the belt, if we ever do, we'll certainly find out. Next job, I'm going to get this uh, pipe out of the way here. Right, here we go. The uh, intercooler pipe is now off. Jubilee clip undone there. These two bolts here. These are studs welded into the chassis. And my one, the ends are really corroded. So what I did, I got to the end here and this locked off tight. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna twist that, break that off the chassis if I keep on doing it. So fortunately they're very long and I just took a grinder to it and I cut it off right up against the nut because the nut's not gonna be any good now anyway. 
Um, basically what I'll do, I'll get another nut when I come to put it back together, but at least I've still managed to keep my two studs. So I cut this one as well, but at least I've managed to keep my two studs as they were factory in the chassis. Underneath the aircon compressor removed, four bolts, namely here, be careful with them. I've got one in particular, the one right at the top there, you can just see it poking out there, corroded as buggery. So I'll lube that up when I go and put it back. Removing that allowed me to remove the belt that goes around there, which is the drive on it. The next step, I believe, for me, is going to be either taking off the serpentine belt. Yeah, it will be taking off the drive belt but via that tension, uh, releasing the pressure on that tensioner, which will then remove the belt from here and then we can lower the engine down to get access to the four bolts. Hang on. The four bolts that are inside there. You don't need to take the center one out, it's just the outer, and then the actual drive itself will come off. Right, next job, next two jobs, let's say, um, is to first of all, re remove the drive belt, which is a 15 mil spanner and the tensioner, which is located just under the, just round the back of the uh, crankshaft pulley. I'm using another spanner on it as well, just to get some leverage. I'm gonna try not to knock the camera, but basically I go in there like so, pull the tensioner down like so and try, God, it's so tight. Uh, not a minute. That's the fella. Oh. Release the tension gently. Not like that low. And I've got my spanner stuck in there. Now this belt, this vehicle was serviced at a full service before I picked it up back in November. And I would say that that belt is quite new. So fair play to them. They've obviously done what they said they were gonna do. I think certainly not old at all, but I'm probably gonna replace it just because it's a pain in the ass to do it any other time. And this is the belt that drives the aircon pump. Uh, I'll get one of those. Some numbers on there and uh, replace them both when we come to put them back. Now we need to lower the engine on the scissor jack to get access to the four bolts that hold the crank pulley on. We're doing that. And that's, you've just got to drop it enough so you can see the bolt. Which you can just see in there. That's enough and then we'll rotate the crank on a spanner. Uh, I think that's a 17 mil each time to get the four of them out. Ah, oh, do you know what I've done? Oh, I left the belt on. <laughs> what a wally. Should have left the drive belt on to keep the pulley tight. But there is a way that you can do it if you make that mistake. And that is by just turning the crank on the 17 mil socket and then putting it in gear. And that will be enough to lock off the crank. So yeah, you'd need someone to uh, 
put it in gear for you to stop it turning. But yeah, I just recommend cracking those off before you remove the belt. turn the engine over turn it over clockwise and crack off the last one that's your four volts out and then you should be able to wiggle that off of there And there you have that. Not in bad condition. And then we get our first look at the cam belt. Ooh. So now the next job is to unbolt, I think there's seven or eight bolts all the way around the casing to remove the casing to expose the lock. Okay, I've undone all the bolts around the case. There are two, you've got your tensioner uh, pulley, which is here, and your idler pulley, which is behind it. I've removed both of those. I am just finishing off removing, in, removing the tensioner pulley body, as it were, because it just overlaps the case. I guess if you were to be a cowboy, and crack the case you could probably get away with it but I don't want to do that of course I don't now I think it's free I don't know if it comes out from above or down below You go below or not? Might do. Let's have a look. Got to do a bit of wiggling. Right, it comes out from the bottom. Just looking inside the case. There's a bit of uh, belt deterioration in there. There you go. I always knew these were Ivecos. Ivico. So that's the cover off. Let's try and get a little look at the belt. Okay. Yeah, it's not looking too terrible in there. Clearly signs of some deterioration. And if you look at the back of the belt, you can just start to make out these little ribs showing through the back of the belt and i always judge those if you can start to see the teeth the backs of the teeth showing through the back of the belt you know there's a fair amount of wear on that i say no real signs of it cracking up or anything like that right now but i'd say 30 odd thousand miles is probably the original belt on there but yeah lovely so next job we have a little recap and i also need to make sure that i've got the right size bolts to drop in to that fuel pump pulley because that's got to come off as well because i'm changing the water pump the water can't do a job like this and not do the water pump as well. What I've learned, because it's the first time for me, and uh, there was a point where I wasn't gonna do the job at all, but I spent a considerable amount of time cutting up some blocks and getting the vehicle off the ground as high as I could, just so I'd have some room underneath. I've heard since that people remove the quarter cover on the bumper and take out slam panels etc i didn't know whether i was going to have to do that uh clearly so far i don't have to but my recommendation with it is uh jack it up as high as you can support it well remove your wheel 
remove your inner arch and then under the bonnet start with the washer bottle <coughs> excuse me followed by the bracket which will expose the bracket for the expansion bottle which also has the power steering fluid reservoir attached to it that will then enable you to separate the two leave the power steering reservoir in there just wrap it out of the way somewhere disconnect your hose pipe that goes to your washer jets and then you'll be at your electric connection and you'll be able to remove your uh, expansion bottle for or your, your bottle for your washers after that providing you've got that jack set up underneath the sump with a nice bit of solid wood on it that's going to give it full support you can then give it a slight raise so you're taking a bit of load on the jack so the weight's not on that engine mount and then undo that mount I think it was three bolts either side wasn't it or four four and three get that out of the way and then you're into uh, getting underneath it remove I removed the drive belt the one that goes around the alternator too early uh, I didn't want to put the serpentine belt as I call it back on so I basically turned the crank on the spanner and put the vehicle in gear so it locked off the crank and I was able to undo those four bolts that remove the lower pulley. You've got a couple of pulleys and idlers to remove because they slightly infringe on the outer collars of the timing cover. And I didn't want to break it, so I took all those out of the way and then it was on to cracking on with uh, the actual removal of the water pump. Yeah, so far, so good. Like I say, timing belts aren't a major problem as long as you've got some basic knowledge. Uh, the settings are important and stuff like that. But quite often the daunting part of the job purely and simply is getting access and getting room to work in that environment. But so far so good. Let's have a look at the new parts. Right, I bought a gates kit. I've used gates, belts and stuff for years and in the kit you will find you've got your new belt and it does have two timing marks on it there and there which should marry up with the camshaft pulley on the top and the crankshaft pulley on the bottom. Fingers crossed that happens. After that we've got a replacement idler pulley we've got our new tensioner that's a 10 mil allen key in there so we'll set all that up uh, you've got some o-rings uh, one's for the water pump the other one's for uh, something in there somewhere and then you've got the water pump kit as well And that's basically what you're removing. Your injection pump comes through here. And then you've got all your bolts. Like I say, this, I think it's this little one down here is the odd 10 mil. But some of them, they're not all the same length. But this one, oh, it feels nice. Oh, it does feel nice. But yeah. So, and that's basically all you get in the kit. So let's get on with removing the water pump. Well, I'm glad we had that little recap. I'm now at the stage where I have my top pin in my camshaft. That's this one here. That just slots in and goes right through there. And then I, you can just see I've got a spanner on the tensioner for the cam belt. because that's the next job. I've also inserted three bolts and removed the center nut on the fuel pump pulley. Uh, those three bolts, I shall nip them in gently and that should help that 
tooth cog to pop off once the tension and the belt are removed. And then under here, I have my crank shaft pin. Now I use a spanner on the nut to locate it. The arrow generally is around about sort of nine, nearly nine o'clock up here. The top marking is sort of just off midday. That's your top dead center. This, wiggle this in, gently move the crank backwards and forwards on your socket and it should lock all the way in and be nice and tight and this shouldn't wiggle about at all so that's got to be really tight and if you want to double make sure you can put your spanner back on here and you'll find that you will not be able to turn that cog at all so now I'm into undoing my tension up Jesus, I don't need to do one end. Here we go. Something's going, either the, the nut or the wrench. I know. There you go. Ooh. That's it. So we should now be able to remove the old belt. They do come out relatively easy. All right, let's go upstairs and pull it out from up there. Well, that's the old belt out. Gotta be honest. Generally, it's in quite good condition. That is, nevertheless, yeah. it might be me getting it out from around that fuel pump because it was stuck in there. But yeah, it's not cracking up by any means, but it is showing wear across the back where it runs around the pulleys, which uh, I'm glad going I'm changing it anyway right so now we're down to tightening those up and seeing if we can pop that gear drive off because the next stage is to remove the water pump housing which is all of this here and all of this casing here here and up there now the fuel pumps on these aren't they're electronic fuel injection, so the fuel pumps aren't timed up on these engines. So that's one less thing to worry about. It's just getting that sprocket off, and then we can undo the entire body of the pump and remove that. Right, so I've just nipped up my bolts slowly, uh, sequentially, and sure enough, the pulley has popped off which is nice, so I haven't got to worry too much about that. Nicely does it. Okay, obviously that'll be going back. Okay, the next job, the next job is to now remove, you got one buried in there, right down there, see it one? You got three around the pump, that's four five and there's a little tiny one 10 mil uh, on that outer side there six uh, oh seven eight and I think nine so I'm gonna crack those off and get the damn thing out of there right I've removed all the bolts for the water pump you've got nine 13 mil and one 10 mil what I've done, I've put all the bolts, as I took them out, in the new water pump. The top, there's the little 10 mil one up there. Because some of these, they're not all the same length. So I thought, you know what, for now, I'm gonna put them all in their holes and I'll probably mark them. I'm gonna probably number them, like one, and put a one on the case. 
so I get them back in the right place. Now, I don't know if that's signs of the water pump leaking or just general corrosion, but technically now, this should be coming free. Be prepared for the remainder of the fluid out of the block trickling out. Why, for some reason, ah, there she goes. I can't see what I'm doing. I assume, there you go. the old o-ring dropped out there there you go that's out of the water pump Let's have a little look yeah, face is corroded do you know possibly very hard to tell it's you know it's just raw steel the outer face so it's not very well protected anyway from the elements but yeah water pump just hangs uh injection pump just hangs there bit of corrosion everywhere on it i'm going to give all that a tidy up i'm not going to uh be putting uh, that back and leaving those faces like that as for the water pump yeah well look there's signs of it it's definitely i don't know Tricky, tricky to diagnose it, but I'll tell you something though. That's quite tight. And that one, um, a little bit of play in there right anyway that's done with now so we're on the put back now a bit of clean up and then we can start to put Rory back together again your kit comes with three o-rings one the large black one goes around the impeller. The smaller black one goes around this piece here. And there's a gray one in there, which is kind of earmarked for the injection pump. Now, I don't know, I've never come across one on a diesel pump before. Uh, there wasn't one in mine, so I'm not fitting that back. Uh, because the pump's sealed. There's no leaking issues possible other than the pump failing. So I'm not going to worry about that. What I've done is I've cleaned the face up and I have run a small amount of Vaseline around the outer edge. You could use grease, but I find Vaseline is much finer. And the same around here. A, it will help the O-ring stay in its position. And B, it will help stop any pinching when you come to reassemble it. I've had a clean up in here, clean the face up, uh, along with the injection pump as well. I have put a little bit of Vaseline around the outer sleeve of the injection pump because that's going to slide through your water pump. And I have done the same, like a little smear over the face of the uh, block. And you'll just probably be able to make out that I've put a little bit on the collars of the bolt holes to enable uh, the bolts to go in nicely. I have also numbered this bolt holes. Uh, it's one to 10. So I've started down here in the bottom corner. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And number 10 is over there. That's your little 10 mil one at the top. And I've marked the tops of the bolts bit hard to see but these bolts are in the old water pump but I've put a number on each of the bolts so I know that they go back 
in the right place. God knows why I'm trying to get a camera in here. Alrighty. Over the injection pump, you can grab hold of the thread on the injection pump. That feels quite good, I've got to say. But that pump needs to come through a lot more than that. The pump's poking through, but nowhere near enough. It sits about a quarter of an inch proud when it's in properly. properly. But we're in. You can possibly almost see the line up there. Right, I've got all my bolts in place. A uh, little 10 mil up the top there. Uh, I had to give the casing a little tap, and I mean it was a little tap, just knocked it back and the pump came through. You can see it sitting proud. There's a little bit of Vaseline around there. That's not gonna hurt. Uh, all the bolts are in. When you nip it up, do it in like a cross section, nice and gently, so that you pull the face to face down, nice and true. I believe the torque wrench setting is about 35 newton meters. Not a lot. All the bolts are in. I've tightened them all up. My torque wrench doesn't go down to 35 uh, newton meters. So I've just done them up on a wrench using my own judgment. So that one's entirely up to you. We're now ready to reinstall the injection pump drive pulley slots on there like that pop that in and I'm gonna pop the washer on over the top and the nut I've got a shiny side and I've got a non shiny side to so the shiny side went to the washer I'm just gonna tighten that up by hand the shaft doesn't come all the way through the nut so I'm going to put a bit of Loctite on that when I come to tighten it up, which I can't do right now, purely because uh, there's no resistance on it. But just give it a little spin, and make sure that it can turn freely. Next job is to place the cam belt. Okay, timing belt in. You should be able to see underneath here, the timing mark marrying up with the mark on the crank pulley. You'll notice that I've used a couple of clips to keep the belt in the right place while I manhandle it round the rest of the pulleys. And on the crankshaft, on the crankshaft pulley, you'll see that, that white line is lining up with the mark on the crank pulley. That's all good. As for the tensioner, I put the tensioner in loosely just to take up the slack, but it can be done without putting the tensioner in initially just to get everything in place. But I'm going to remove the tensioner now and I'm gonna put a tiny little drop of uh, Loctite on the end of that bolt just to make sure it doesn't wanna move in the future. It will come off if I have to do the belt again. Idler pulley tightened up 35 newton meters that's all it needs okay i fitted the tensioner and using my 10 mil allen i had to use both hands i couldn't get a camera up here sorry using my 10 mil allen key and my 13 mil ratchet i fitted my tensioner and i've tensioned it up to beyond the setting so it's over torque at the moment. And then I'm gonna rotate the engine seven or eight times in a clockwise direction, just to allow the belt to bed and make sure it's sitting flush on all the pulleys. It's time to remove your timing pins. That's number one. And that's number two. Something I've not mentioned regarding the timing pins, on the back of the camshafts, uh, namely there, and there's one tucked underneath here, are two further pin applications to lock the camshafts off. I couldn't actually get either of these out, 
so I haven't used the pins. It's not an issue as long as you get everything else on the front locked up and timed up correctly. I kind of lost count how many times I've been round. But basically, when you've done your eight revolutions, your timing marks should line up markings on the pulleys. Eight times on a spanner is hard graft but I'm there you can just see it's coming round and there the two timing marks are aligned and once you've completed your revolutions you've checked your timing again then using your allen key and your 13 mil spanner adjust the tensioner back into the little dimple in the back plate marry up together and then tighten it up i have put sorry i couldn't show you it i needed both hands and it's quite an intricate bit of detail on who to get it right uh, i've put a little bit of thread lock on the end of that just to make sure it doesn't want to come out i always worry about those things there's only one bolt between you and catastrophic disaster the next important thing to do is not to forget to put your pin back I've put a little drop of thread lock on that again. Screw your pin back in the hole. Tighten that up. If you don't put that back in and you put the timing cover back on, you're gonna be in big trouble because that's just gonna throw all the oil out all over the belt. Okay, timing plug back in on the crankshaft. I'm happy with the tensioner. Don't know if you can, you can just see that little hole in the recess lining up with the crease in the tensioner. I've double checked all of my bolts. Fuel pump pulley tightened up with a bit of Loctite, 90 newton meters. Idler pulley tightened up, 35 newton meters, everything looking just dandy now when you get to this stage where the belts all fitted and your tension is tight idler pulley etc you can if curiosity is getting the better of you turn the engine over on the key but don't be surprised if this happens make sure it's out of gear because it's on the chocks start and it will just stop and basically that is because you've got the ancillaries disconnected but you know fundamentally that the timing is correct now just a heads up at that stage without the ancillaries or the auxiliaries all connected up etc if you connect the intercooler pipe back to the intercooler stroke radiator the vehicle should continue to run but don't do it for long i only left it off because i knew that's normally how they react okay timing cover all back bolt it up tensioner pulley for the drive belt in idler pulley in and a new gates belt on the alternator power steering pump back in i've lubricated all the bolts and the shafts on the studs just because they were getting a bit corroded crank pulley all tightened up intercooler pipe connected new bolts and i've proper greased those up to try and protect those another little interesting point why you've got the inner arch out up here just by your strut 
is a big drain, a big rubber drain plug or hose that comes out. It's really bunged up. Give that a good clean out. It's the one that services this channel here when all that rainwater runs down off your windscreen, etc. That is the hole that it drains into down there, down there. I've got mine disconnected at the moment because the bottle's out, but that goes into there and then it follows on, follows on down and goes through the inner arch. Clean that one out, a good maintenance check on that one. So the only things missing now are the engine mount, which I'm just in the process of cleaning up those studs. I think I'm gonna give it a crank over just to make sure everything's okay. Everything's good, except for the fact there's no water in it. I'm only gonna run it for a few seconds, but let's make sure that we're up and running. Nothing untoward come up. Okay, pretty much everything back together again now. Inner arch is back. Uh, I'm doing some work on the sump, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tidy up because it was a bit corroded. Aircon pumps back. The stretch belt, they're a challenge. When you put these back, you want to put the belt on over the pulley and then line it up. It's tricky and fiddly, but it's the only way. There's no adjustment on that belt. I put brand new belts on it as well. And I'll keep the old ones just as spares because if I ever break down on the continent and it's just a belt, I can probably deal with that and not have to chase up parts. These four bolts up here, one, two, three and four, really were corroded inside. I guess they get all the full flow of the spray and everything from the road. So I managed to give them a really good clean out and I've greased all the insides of the ports. And from the top, not much to see now. Everything's back in situ where it should be. I've greased up everything, even the engine mount bolts and that cleaned all the threads up. The same with the block. Had a good clean up inside. I've got water in it and uh, let's run it up. Uh, I didn't show you the tools I used for the timing kit. It was a, a Nielsen kit off eBay, about 15 quid. I say these two here are for the cam, the back of the cam on the top of the engine. They would be used if you're doing the timing chain because there's actually a timing chain on the back of these as well. And this little short one here is the one that goes on the camshaft pulley. So I've got a couple of spare belts, I shall keep those. There wasn't a great deal wrong with them. They'll do for spares. Don't forget to make sure you put that plug back in the bottom where the crank pulley is after you've done the timing. Check that little drain that's above the wheel arch. Anyway, if you've enjoyed that video and it's been of use to you, drop us a like or a subscribe, that'd be lovely. Uh, more stuff on the way. I shall get it out for a road test in a couple of days. I'd like to say I've got a few bits and pieces I want to finish up on it. But thanks for watching and any questions, by all means, drop us a line. Take care. Be good.